Last week we talked about, two weeks ago we talked about the men in Luke 5 that were watching the miracles that Jesus was doing, particularly the one where the friends had let the lame man down through the roof because they couldn't get to Jesus any other way. There were so many crowds surrounding him, and so because of their desire to bring their sick friend to the Lord because he was their only hope, they cut a hole in the roof, and as Pastor Dave informed me, they removed tiles from it, and they let his bed down in front of Jesus. And Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you. Go your way. The religious leaders that were there watching the miracles happen said, how can he forgive sins? And they found fault with that statement. But those who understood what Jesus was doing, who understood the healing that was performed because of the faith of the friends, and understood that he was, Jesus is God, as he claimed to be, said, these are very strange things that we have witnessed today. And my challenge to you was to go live your life exactly as Christ leads you, going about your daily work, going about the things you normally do, the people you normally interact with, and watch the miracles that God does as you follow him. And they shouldn't be strange to us, they should be expected because we walk in faith and we live through Christ. Well, immediately following that statement by those men, Jesus went on, and he saw, the scripture says, a publican. I had to look up publican because I thought publican meant tax collector. And the dictionary first definition said, one who owns a pub. And I thought, well, I've never seen that in Scripture before. Well, second definition was tax collector. He he saw Levi, a man who was a tax collector. He collected taxes from the Jewish people for the Roman government. And anything he could keep besides what the Roman government required, he could keep for himself. So he was a hated person. Not well-respected at all, but pretty wealthy. Jesus called him to follow him. And Levi responded immediately and followed Jesus with great joy. We know Levi as Matthew, a disciple. He is a follower of Jesus, one of the first disciples called. And he followed him joyfully. Not only was he joyful about being called by Jesus and responding to that call, he was joyful at the conversion that took place within him upon receiving that call from Jesus. Many times, many times we also receive that call from Jesus and we respond with joy. We want to follow Christ, and we're so glad that we are selected from him. We are called to be part of his kingdom, to be his children. Can you remember the time that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Can you remember how it felt to know that your sins were forgiven? You were no longer dead in your trespasses and sin, but you were alive in Christ Jesus. Maybe that happened to you so many years ago that you don't remember. But you must remember a specific time when you followed Christ and when a wonderful thing happened that brought you such joy. Well, that's how Levi felt when he responded to the call of Christ. His immediate response was to have a celebration, a celebration of life in the spirit over death. Now, as a tax collector... His friends were mostly the non-religious people. So when he invited them to his banquet, his party, his celebration, they were not 
the upright, holy people that the religious leaders felt should be there. He also invited Jesus and his disciples at that time to be there to celebrate as well. And Jesus and his disciples went. But the holy, self-righteous Pharisees and religious leaders said, What is this man who calls himself God and his followers? What are they doing eating with the riffraff? That's my translation. They wanted to know why Jesus was there with the sinners, with those who had not come to repentance yet, who were not obeying the law as they saw it. Jesus said, I've come to save the lost. I didn't come to stay and hang out with the people who are already righteous in their own minds, who don't have need of a savior in their own minds, but I have come to seek and to save those which are lost, to bring the sinners to full knowledge of Jesus Christ. Levi, as a new, born-again believer in Jesus Christ, wanted to share his faith, his joy, with all of his friends. How better to do that than to invite Jesus, the one who had called him, and let them meet him personally? A lot of times when people come to know Christ, their friends are the people they hung out with in the world. That's the people they know, and that's the way it's supposed to be, because they can witness to those non-believers. It's only after we've become Christians for a long time and we've become churchified that we only know Christians. And we let that happen to us because we're comfortable in our church and we're comfortable with the words we speak and we're comfortable with sharing scripture to each other, with each other. But Levi was sharing that joy with his unbelieving friends. We need to know that even though the Pharisees thought it was wrong for Levi to be sharing with his friends, the unbelievers, that they were wrong. Those righteous people were wrong. What they wanted was for Levi to accept Christ, if that's what he was going to do. They weren't sure about that. But as long as he was going to now be a religious person, he should obey their laws. He should fast on their fast days and pray in public and eat specific foods and not eat other foods. They had a whole list of rules for Levi to follow and also for Jesus and his disciples to follow. In fact, those religious leaders said, why don't you and your disciples fast? John the Baptist and his disciples fast. Not only did the religious leaders say that, but in Matthew 9, some of John's disciples came to Jesus and said, we fast, we follow the law, why aren't you? Why don't your disciples follow the law? Jesus said, called himself the bridegroom. He said, when the bridegroom is with you, there is no need to fast. When the bridegroom is gone, meaning going to the cross, suffering for the sin of mankind, becoming sin so that we could be saved, that's the time to mourn. That's the time to fast. Is fasting wrong? No. Fasting is good for our health. Fasting is good to bring our minds into alignment with what God has for us. When we're really troubled over a situation, putting food aside and concentrating on God, praying, reading his word is a good thing. But what the Jewish leaders and the Pharisees had forgotten was the reason for the fasting. They became so entrenched in the ritual of fasting and praying publicly and the other rituals that they had that they forgot to they didn't remember the reason for it too often in our churches we become involved in our rituals 
We sing, this is the day we stand up, we say the Lord's Prayer, we sing amazing grace at the end, we raise our hands at the end. We take communion every Sunday. These can become rituals if we don't remember the reason that we do them. We say our, the Lord's Prayer to remember the prayer that Jesus prayed with his disciples. We sing, this is the day the Lord has made because we are celebrating the fact that we are together today or any Sunday here in this fellowship that God has brought us into. Sometimes we raise our hands because of joy. Sometimes we raise our hand because of worship, because our spirit just needs to reach out. Not because there's anything holy in the hand raising or the not hand raising, but because we do it unto the Lord and we have a purpose for it. Whenever we get into things that we do repetitively that we think define us as Christians, we need to remember that it's not the repetitive motion. It's who we are serving and why we do those things. When Disciples of Christ Church denomination uh, was founded, it was meant to be open to all believers. Whatever your background, whatever your traditions, the one thing that all could agree on is celebrating communion, and they determined that it would be each week. And that no matter what your Christian background, what your personal beliefs, your lifestyle, that you could believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he made the sacrifice for our sins, that we are believers in him through that sacrifice, and as oft as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. That was the basis for the founding of Disciples of Christ, this denomination. Well, wouldn't you know they had a split over how they were going to partake of communion because man gets in there. Always man has their own way of doing it. But that belief has continued on till today so that when we come together and, and the words they use is gather at the table, we are keeping in mind that we are believers in Jesus Christ and he is our way of salvation, and we are honoring that. Not the juice, not the bread, not the wine, not the loaves, however your tradition is, but the believing that Jesus is our Savior and confirming that fact as we gather together. Many churches have many ways of delivering the gospel, Many churches have many rules as to how it should be done, what is right or wrong, just as the Pharisees did in the time of Jesus when they insisted that everyone should follow the law as they understood it. So do our churches today. When I was a young person from seven on up, roller skating at our skating rink was a sin because my pastor's wife deemed it to be that. So when I went roller skating, I had to hide in a group of people because the roller rink was right across from her front door. And um, so not only was I sinning by going roller skating, I was being sneaky and lying about it, and then I was hiding the truth from her because she'd say, how was your week? And I'd say, oh, fine. And I didn't say, and I went roller skating. But that was her particular law of righteousness. We couldn't go to movies, we couldn't dance, because that would send us straight to hell in the church I was raised in. Dave had a hard time with dancing. Our girls had to fight him to go to proms. I think it's just amazing to see him dancing every Friday night, that God has changed his mind about how things are. Because we get so focused on the rules and regulations of how it ought to be or how we've been taught that we forget we're talking about grace, about salvation, about Jesus leading us in the way that we should walk. When the band started about 25 years ago, I couldn't dance because that was a sin, right? And I had to go home and practice in front of the mirror. Okay, is this okay? 
Is this too weird? Does this look strange? God, how do you feel about this? You know, and because of the rules and the regulations that were put upon me for so long, now I can't hardly stand still. And it's okay with God because it doesn't have anything to do with my salvation. It has to do with the way I was taught regulations. If you do these, you will be pleasing to God. If you don't do these, you will be pleasing to God. God says, come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He calls us by his spirit. He speaks to us through his word to tell us what he wants us to do and how he wants to do it. At the end of the scripture reading that we were reading, he told them the parable, no one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. When we come to Jesus, we need to release our old ways and say, here I am, your vessel. I am new in Christ Jesus. I don't care if you've walked with him for 60, 70, 80 years. You can still be transformed by his spirit and have newness of life in you. We take the new message of the grace of God the mercy of God that gives us eternal life through Christ Jesus, and we go from that new point. We don't just add it to all of the old things we believe. I like this. When Christ comes in, he change, changes unbelief to faith, rebellion to surrender, hatred to love, sin to righteousness. But because we're still human, he changes self-righteousness to Christ. Because no matter how we start, that man is still there saying, well, why don't you try this? Or let's make a rule about this other thing. We are to follow Christ, meaning love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Give of that love and respect to people and let Jesus work through you. Show the joy of your salvation. Don't become all uptight and grumbly. To close, I want to tell you a story of donkey religion. A little girl went to a church service and there she found, she heard the message of Christ and she accepted him as her savior. She ran home afterwards, ran into the house and said, Grandpa, Grandpa, I'm a Christian. I'm so happy I became a Christian tonight. He says, you are making way too much noise and acting way too giddy to be a Christian. You need to settle down. So, totally devoid of joy, she walked outside, sat on the fence, and the old donkey came over and nudged her knee and walked up to her and as she's petting him she holds his face in her hand and she says old donkey you must certainly be a Christian because you have such a long face let's not have donkey religion let's have the joy of Christ operating in our life will we have sad times yes Will we have times that are really hard to walk through, times of grief and sorrow? Yes. But the joy of the Lord is our strength, and he guides us every step of the way.